The Maserati MC20 Cello is another of what we should probably call last hurrah cars. It comes from an increasingly familiar playbook an automaker announces its commitment to a fully electric future, and then goes out and creates the loudest, punchiest, and most exciting combustion model it possibly can. Qualities that the MC20 Cello pretty much exemplifies. We already know that Maserati's MC20 sports car will gain a fully electric derivative later in its lifespan, with the Folgor promising to use a high-tech triple motor system and offering a level of performance well in excess of that from the versions powered by the company's Natuno V6. But there is no chance the EMC will get anywhere close to this one on noise or charisma. Frankly, it couldn't, the Natuno takes both qualities off the dial. That was true for the MC20 Coupe, and is even truer for the new open-top cello version that Auto Week recently got to drive in Sicily. The differences between both MC20 variants are both limited and obvious. The cellos has a glass hardtop which can fold away beneath the rear clamshell, an electrically powered process that takes just 12 seconds and which can be carried out at speeds up to 30 miles per hour. The roof and its mechanism add 143 pounds over the MC20 coupe on Maserati's numbers, but as both cars use the same carbon fiber tub, the Roadster's torsional rigidity is undiminished. The cello looks as handsome as the coupe with the roof up, the biggest difference being its lack of a glass cover over the rear-mounted engine, and with the top lowered the cello crosses the line into outright gorgeousness. This is a spectacularly good-looking car. Although the roof operates quickly and without drama, ordering it up or down is more trouble, thanks to the need to do so through the touchscreen interface. Maserati engineers say that reprogramming the UI to allow this to happen actually cost more money than simply fitting a conventional switch, making it an even stranger decision not to opt for a physical control given the awkward need to maintain pressure on the activation panel throughout the cycle, something I found impossible to do without taking eyes off the road. Electrically dimming the glass roof's glass panel also only brings a slight difference to the amount of light getting through. The cello's practicality is also as limited as that of the coupe, with awkward access through the narrow aperture of the gullwing opening door when the roof is raised. Luggage space could be politely described as bijou. There is a 3.52 foot compartment behind the engine, and an even dinkier 0.52 foot one under the hood, which concludes the substantive criticism, because pretty much everything else about the MC20 cello is excellent. The Natuno V6 is both the starring and defining feature. This manages the unlikely combination of having just under 3 liters of swept capacity while achieving a 621 horsepower peak output. That is the result of both an innovative motorsport-inspired pre-ignition system and also the huge boost pressures being provided by two turbos, these delivering peaks of up to 43.5 pounds per square inch. If you're thinking that sounds like a recipe for lag, then you're entirely right, with the digital Tacho showing anything less than 3,000 revolutions per minute, responses are lazy and there is a distinct pause as the turbo spool but the engine also possesses huge character thanks to its rushing induction noise and wastegate hiss every time the gas is eased. All this is present in the MC20 coupe, but feels rawer and more exciting in the cello with the roof lowered. Fully unleashed, the cello's rear Bridgestone S007 tires often struggle to find off-the-line traction on Sicily's frequently broken asphalt, but once rolling in with the turbos in their boost zone it feels relentless. On paper it is indeed slower than open-top supercars like the McLaren 720S and Ferrari F8 Spiders, subjectively it feels even more thrilling than either of those hybrid alternatives. Yet despite the performance, the cello isn't harsh. Like the coupe there are three dynamic modes, GT, Sport, and Corsa, with each of these delivering substantially different driving experiences. GT is very languid, with the adaptive dampers being pretty much pillow soft by sports car standards and the standard 8 speed twin clutch transmission shifting ratios with the gentleness of a torque converter. Sport firms up the chassis nicely and takes the elastic from the throttle pedal and adds more snap to the gear change. The most aggressive Corsa mode, as in track did indeed feel too much for Sicily's scarred asphalt, but the ability to toggle the dampers to their softer setting allowed the chance to still enjoy the punchiest engine mode and neck knotting torque bumps to every gearbox upshift. Regardless of dynamic mode, the cello steering is fast-geared and delivers keen front-end responses. Lateral grip is huge but, like its coupe sister, this MC20 happy to tweak and trim its cornering line in response to small throttle inputs. In tighter turns the rear axle can be pushed to the edge of breakaway, even slightly beyond it, without the MC20 turning snappy or feeling ill-tempered but the overwhelming impression is one of high-speed stability, the cello happy to cruise at the sort of velocities that can only be legally experienced on the German Autobahn. The cabin feels surprisingly snug and well insulated with the roof raised, too. Maserati admits that the cello is likely to make up half of MC20 sales, leaving me wondering what reason the other half of potential customers might have for sticking with the coupe. Yes, a fixed roof is a purer choice for a sports car, 
But beyond the slight increase in mass the cello doesn't seem to lose anything compared to the coupe, well, apart from the predictable need to dig deeper. Pricing for the cello hasn't been confirmed, but we can safely predict that Maserati will extract a substantial premium over the $217,000 being asked for the coupe. If you've got the money then, given free choice, you'd almost certainly choose to pay it.